Storytelling, kind of an interesting uh, title for a sermon. Uh, for today, I want to do uh, three things. I want to confirm the meaning of the parable of the sower. Then I want to discuss Jesus' use of parables, or these short stories. And then talk about the power and the importance of storytelling. So let's get into the parable of the sower. This parable is a picture of different ways in which people receive the word of God. The seed on the path represents those who hear but do not believe. The seed on the rock signifies those who receive the gospel but fall away when faced with trouble. The third type of seed that falls among the thorns is those who receive the gospel but are then distracted by the desires and the challenges of the world and prevents them from pursuing it. The final kind of seed is those who receive the gospel and then it bears fruit. It may seem puzzling that the sower seems to carelessly sow on different kinds of soil. There's nothing frugal about the actions of this sower, scattering seed in every direction without a care as to whether that seed is falling on prepared soil or not. The sower keeps sowing generously, even in the least promising places. This parable reminds us of all that God will overcome. Rocks, scorching sun, thorns, and snatching creatures in order to bring life to the world. Jesus does not say that the good soil has no stones or no thorns in it. It's just that those things don't stop it from bearing fruit. Our hearts are certainly not all alike. We all have our own rocks. We all encounter our own thorns. But what distinguished that good ground was fruitfulness. Even in the least promising places, God finds a way to bring a harvest as each individual heart is able. So Jesus tells this in a parable. In fact, Jesus uses 38 parables in his ministry, all of them taken from everyday experiences of the people to whom he was speaking. The Greek word literally means a throwing or placing of things alongside of each other for the purpose of comparison. The comparison is expressed clearly by Jesus when he says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then goes on to talk about the sowing of seeds. It's a common start to many of Jesus' parable, this idea of comparison. Parables are designed to communicate truth in everyday terms, yet at the same time, push us to think in a little bit unconventional ways to challenge our own usual way of thinking. It's a simple story to communicate the truth of God and his love for us. So in today's gospel reading, you noticed it was broken up into two passages, and verses 10 through 17 were omitted. But I want to highlight a couple of the thoughts that Jesus gives to the disciples in this portion. It's important to understand parables. Verse 10 says, Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. An interesting lesson in this passage. 
So what is it that the disciples possessed, but the others did not, that enabled their understanding, that enabled their seeing and hearing? It was their faith in Christ. The disciples had received Jesus as the Messiah, and because of their faith in him as their king, they were able to receive and understand the mysteries of the kingdom. They may not have understood everything that Jesus did or said, but they trusted him, which is what God wants from us. If he wanted people to simply believe that he exists, he could have given us rational arguments that were very convincing, but clearly belief in his existence is not enough alone. He wants faith, living, growing, and shared. Not just believing, but allowing that belief to change us. But remember, it's not just about those that do understand or that do have faith. The sower keeps sowing generously and extravagantly, even in the least promising places. Telling stories. Jesus sets the example for us with regard to the use of parables or short stories. For some of us, storytelling doesn't come naturally, in particular, when it comes to church, or about our relationship with Jesus. But it's important, and we are called to share what God has done for us. Listening for and then sharing stories about our faith can draw us together. Telling our specific story can invite others to respond to God's call to all people, which is to love and to serve each other as neighbors. It's through these personal stories that we see and we share our connection with each other as children of God. Stories need to be told at multiple levels as well. At the overall church level, with regard to things that are happening here in this faith community at St. John, and our personal level stories. For the church, it's telling stories of things that have been done, things that we are doing, and where we are going. It's here that the peace is so vital, as Pastor reminded us about last week. Without the peace among us, our mission together can be diminished, and the world is watching. They'll detect a Christian community that is not authentic. For us at St. John, it's continuing to tell stories, the stories of ministries that have been done, things that we do regularly, like Lutheran World Relief that we talked about this morning, things that we're doing, like the Pathways Ministry, uh, things going on with the residents, and as we heard this morning from Shirley, the uh, development of new ministry to help tutor children who are in such desperate need. It's telling those stories. We will begin a series of short video segments here at St. John that tell the stories of our ministries. The first one in that series is actually going to be about the Thursday morning men's breakfast. It's currently in studio, so stay tuned for that and the others that will come that will help us tell the story of what's going on here in this faith community at St. John. On the personal level, God has blessed all of us with unique personalities. He's equipped us with unique gifts in order to serve others and unique experiences that make up our own unique faith stories. Telling your spiritual story can be one of the most important things that you do for several reasons. We share the nature of God's goodness and love with people who may not know God and that love when we share our story with them. We show those who have heard of him who he truly is 
And we bring glory to God when we share those stories. Because it's all about Him and not about us. Amen? As we tell it, we're reminded of God's hand in our own life. And so it's got benefit for us as we relate that story. And finally, as 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verse 15 reminds us, we need to be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks us why we live the way that we do. So, not sure where to start? This is a brief summary uh, that I thought was wonderful by a, a man named Bill Greguska uh, from the needencouragement.com site. When I share my testimony with a friend or even a stranger, I keep it short so I do not bore them with unnecessary details. Simply tell them how my life was before Jesus, how Jesus came into my life, and how my life changed because of him. Focus mainly on the difference that he made in life. Just think for a second. God has delivered you and me from many troubles in our lives, and it takes only a brief testimony to help someone understand the importance and the benefit of a relationship with Jesus. So do you have a moment to share that can change someone's life? Something you can share with someone on that short elevator ride or when you encounter them in the community as you're meeting needs and someone has a question as to why you may do it. In the coming weeks, I will provide all of us with a framework for thinking through our own stories so that we're pre pre prepared to share it when the time comes, when somebody asks, and when that time is right. A series of questions for us to consider. Things like, were there any special events or turning points in life that brought you closer or maybe even away from God? What influences did education or career or marriage or children have on your faith and your practices? What about it? Uh, what about Jesus and his message that drew you to him or drew you back to him? And what do you believe now or what have you experienced since trusting in Jesus and living the peace? So those are the things that I'll be equipping us all with to help us think through our story. Storytelling. What's your story? What gives your life meaning and purpose? Is there a single moment of enlightenment or many? And how did you arrive at this spiritual place in which you now stand? The good news is that the sower keeps sowing generously, even in the least promising places. Jesus' investment in his disciples shows that he was simply would not give up on them in spite of their many failings. And we trust that he will not give up on us either, but will keep working on whatever is hardened, rocky, or thorny within and among each of us so that we may bear fruit and have a story to tell. We trust in his promise to be with us through everything and to the end of the age. Amen.